Oh, it's really hot. As soon as I'm done, that fan is going in that window. Hello out there. My name is Milesy, and welcome to my channel. I don't know how this is going to sound. The framing is really weird because I am following up on the floss dyeing video today, and it's going to be a little bit awkward. But this was the best way I could find to film this in this location. So. In the last video, we dyed this really funky floss. We did a couple of different colors of it. And now we've got this, pretty much this giant or unusable just loop of floss. You can't pull this out very easily without creating kind of a big tangled mess, but you can make it usable and give it a center pull. And to do that, I find an umbrella swift works best, and this will clamp down onto my table when I am ready to use it. And it's called an umbrella swift because it opens up like an umbrella, and it gets really big, and it's kind of like a pinwheel sort of thing, and it just whacked right into the microphone. I apologize. This one is not a super amazing one. I use this both for getting the yarn onto a big giant hank and taking it off of one. And what we're going to do is we've got this clamp on the bottom, so I'm going to clamp this to my table and then show you what to do from there. So I know this is a little hard to see. We've got the swift down here. And what I'm going to do is take our yarn and wrap it around the swift just once. And then when we open it, and this one does not exactly open smoothly, but it will get there. There we go. As we open it, there we go. You can see it expanding and the floss fits on there perfectly. Now we're just going to go through, pull off our loops. And the floss is ready to go on the Swift. Now what we have down here, which is a little hard to see, this is a yarn winder. This winds yarn up into cakes. I've used a few of them. This design is my favorite, where when you spin the crank, this thing kind of goes in every single direction. I apologize. I apologize. I've been doing this all day. My allergies are flaring up. There's another one where this would just spin in a circle and the wire one will flip back and forth. I have one of those as well. It's very loud and it tends to um, break itself if the tension gets too big. Plus this can just make bigger ones. So I'm going to put this back here. And this is kind of hard to see, but there really wasn't a very good way of filming this. Depending on how your yarn winder works is how you're going to do this, but we're going to find one of the loose ends. I think that's the inner one. They both seem like they're on the inside. That happens. But we're going to take the end of the floss and thread it through your yarn winder in the way that it's supposed to go. And that will vary depending on how your winder works. So with this one, there's two loops and then it connects to the spindle thing, whatever you want to call that, in the middle. And now we're going to make sure that we have all six strands threaded properly. Or else that happens. And we're just going to uh, wind that up just like this. and. We're not doing anything to the Swift. It's probably got quite loud in here. We're not doing anything to the Swift. We're just holding tension with our off offhand as we wind and it will just fly right off. Now these are usually meant for yarn, hence the names Yarn Swift and Yarn Baller but they work quite nicely for this as well. And now when we're done, we just pull off this nice little perfectly round cake of floss. What I like to do at this point, because that is just scary, is just give it a little squeeze. And 
it will kind of collapse onto itself and now you have a very convenient center pole. You can either use your floss just like this or you can skein it out, put it on cards, put it on bobbins. And the way I do that is, here it is, I just wrap it around this really nice kind of uh, almost horseshoe shaped ruler. That's how I measure it when I'm doing my individual skeins. If I'm doing a very large amount, I do have a yardage counter somewhere. It's just not worth it trying to uh, do that for 28, 28 uh, feet at a time. It doesn't really work. So there we go. There we go. You've dyed your floss and now you can store it in whichever way is convenient for you to do so. This is going to be immediately put up on cards and some of it may still be in the store by the time you see this video. I don't know. But there we go. Kind of an awkwardly framed video, but it should hopefully get you started on dyeing your own floss, opening up your own store, whatever you want to do. There we go. I'm going to do this for the other one now and uh, try not to die from allergies, but Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. Make sure you hit notifications if you want to see every single video that goes up on this channel. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!